This $1,500 gaming PC build can run everything at every resolution and any settings. Yes, this PC build is really good. So if you're thinking of buying a PC build at this price point, I highly recommend you watching this video. I will try to explain everything as simple as possible in case you're a beginner. So don't worry if you have expertise on PC components or you don't, that is totally fine. Also, I will explain what this PC is capable of doing depending on the game. And I will also give you a different option throughout the video. You will have the links to all of these components and the alternatives down below in the video description. That being said, let's start. For the CPU, we have the Ryzen 5 7600. This one is going for $215 by the time that I'm recording this video. And honestly, this is a great processor for the price. It's 6 core, 12 threads. It doesn't consume much power, which is nice. And overall, a great CPU from the AM5 platform, which means that it's also good for future upgrades. For the CPU cooler, we have the Thermal Ride Assassin X. This one is only going for 20 bucks or so. It's not needed if you want to take it out and save up $20. It's not going to hurt your performance. The only reason why it's here is one, because it's going to make your temps a bit lower. Two, it's going to make your gaming experience more quiet. And three, because of aesthetics. So if you don't care about any of that, just don't worry, save up 20 bucks. Performance will be the same. Then for the motherboard, we have the Gigabyte B650M, the S3 Micro ATX motherboard from the AM5 platform. This is going for $125. Honestly, for the price, you're getting enough. It has enough gaming features. It's nothing too crazy, but it's going to get the job done for our CPU. Then for the memory kit, we have the Team Group T4 Spulkan, 32 gigs of RAM, 2x16 of DDR5 at 5600 megahertz CL36 memory. Now for gaming, you only need 16 gigs of RAM, but I like to put 32 gigs of RAM in case you want to do multitasking, streaming, or maybe you want to do content creation. Which by the way, this PC build is not designed for content creation. Of course you can do light content creation, but if you're a professional on that area, these are not the components to go with. Then for the storage, we have a 2TB Gen 4 SSD, plenty of storage, especially if you download big games. You can get away with a terabyte or even 500 gigs depending on the games that you play. Let's say you only want to play Valorant and CSGO, then in that case 500 gigs should be enough, but if you're trying to download a bunch of games, a storage can be filled up really quickly. Then for the graphics card, we have the RX 7900 XT. This is a 20 gig VRAM graphics card that is great for 1440p and 4K gaming. At 1440p, there's no game that you cannot run with this graphics card, even on ultra settings. I would say it's the best 1440p graphics card out there and anything more than this would be an overkill. And then for 4K, it's also a great option because you get 20 gigs of VRAM and it actually performs really solid. Of course, it's not the best at 4K because we have the RTX 4090 and the RTX 4080 and the RX 7900 XTX on top of the 7900 XT. But if you're thinking of playing at 1440p right now and maybe in the future upgrade to 4K, this is the best graphics card that you can get on the market in my opinion. And yes, if you play esports titles at both 4K and 1440p, you will be able to achieve high FPS. So if you want a high refresh rate monitor, let's say 165 Hz 1440p monitor, that's going to be completely fine. Then for the case, we have the Fractal Design Meshify 2. This is an ATX tower case. It has enough airflow, a front mesh panel. You get three pre-installed fans, two on the front and one in the back. And it looks amazing. As you can see, I wanted to make this all black build. If you want some RGB, you will have alternatives in the description but I think this is a great look for your system. And last but not least, the power supply, we have the Corsair RM750E. This is a 750 watt 80 plus volt power supply. This is enough wattage for our system and is 80 rated, meaning that it has really, really good quality. So you won't have to worry about the power supply at all. This whole PC is $1,504 by the time that I'm recording this video. Maybe when you're watching this, it's a bit more expensive or a bit cheaper. I recommend you checking the prices in the video description, but I have a different option for you that is about the same price that I'm about to show you now. And this is a build that has the Ryzen 7 7700X and it's going for a cheaper price. So in theory, you're getting more performance for less money. But the thing here is that in order to get this Ryzen 7, I had to sacrifice some components. I went with 16 gigs of RAM, a one terabyte SSD instead of two terabytes. And then I changed the case to the Bitphoenix Nova mesh with three pre-installed RGB fans because of the price. 
So yes, you are getting a better CPU, so a slightly better performance, but you're getting a worse PC overall. If you want my recommendation, I would recommend you going with the other one with the Ryzen 5 7600 because honestly at 440p and especially at 4K, you will not notice the difference with your human eye. So in my opinion, I would stick with the other one. You get a better PC overall, like I said before, but if you want the Ryzen 7 7700X for some reason, maybe you're more into production work, then it makes sense to go with the Ryzen 7 7700 X. But to be honest, if you're thinking of purely gaming performance, trust me, you're not going to notice a difference and you will be sacrificing your storage, your memory kit and getting a different case. Also a bigger CPU cooler because of the Ryzen 7 7700 X. And if you want a cheaper system than $1500 for about the same performance, I would recommend you taking out the CPU cooler for the Ryzen 5 7600 and going with one terabyte of NVMe Gen 4 SSD. This alone is going to make your PC $1,437. So you're saving around 70 bucks for the same performance. And if you want to go even cheaper, then you can downgrade the case, save another 30 bucks. And there you go. You have a $1,400 for the same exact performance, just less storage. And don't worry if you got lost, you will have all the links, even to the alternatives, like I said before, in the description. Also, if you have $1,500, but you want a private PC instead, I recommend you watching my video about the best private PCs of the month. You will have it in the top right of the screen. I go through different budgets and I also explain what those PCs are capable of running. If you really don't want to build it yourself, then you can go ahead and watch those videos. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for the support and I will see you on the next one.